in the industry a really long time. I've um, been in hospitality, uh, probably like all of us, we started as a hostess. And we're like, wait, what? Someone's giving me cash? Uh, and then we never really stopped and um, moved on to work for the National Football League and then went to work for Outback Steakhouse as their vice president of marketing. Um, and now I own my own marketing agency and I work solely with um, spirit brands and wine brands in the business um, and had just a little passion um, years ago to write. I'm a huge journaler, I believe in it. Um, I think like most folks, I was an angsty teenager and felt comfortable every time I put pen to paper. And then as I became an adult, um, returned to it when I was finding that, you know, social media really went from like a wonderful place to see people's dogs and kittens to a place where things were a little um, less kind and generous. So I left uh, social media for a bit. I went back to good old fashioned letter writing and the pen to paper project was born um, as more and more people that received my letters or you know enjoyed what I was putting out in the world. Uh, we started creating workshops and I've been hosting workshops around the country for the last two years. Um, last year was a little different for all of us. We learned that we could do this via Zoom. Um, and so I'm super excited. I'm passionate about our industry and really adamant that there are a lot of tools that are easily accessible not expensive, sometimes free, like this one, um, that are really important to make sure that we as an industry are providing with, you know, providing to our uh, employees, to our colleagues, to our comrades. So I was so excited when Focus on Health reached out and asked me if I would like to do a workshop. And I was like, uh, yes, please. So I'm super excited to be here today and wanted to just say, you know, this is a collaborative, uh, safe space. Um, we're here to be creative. We're going to put pen to paper so that we can create anxiety reducing tools, um, creative thought producing tools, uh, and then just have some fun together. So if you're intimidated by turning your camera on, that is fine. You may be zoomed out. You may be sitting there naked, whatever. Um, but if you'd like to join us, um, we would love to see your faces. This is a two-way dialogue. Um, so if you are not interested in putting your camera on, but do you want to share thoughts, experiences um, as we move through the workshop today? Um, just raise your hand or put something in the chat room and we'll go that, that way. Um, but there's no wrong way to do this. So I'm super excited to be here. I'm going to turn it back to Lauren. Um, but again, if you want to have your cameras on, we'd love to see your faces. If you're just not interested in that, then chat with us through the chat box so we can all be connected today. Beautiful. Hello, folks. Uh, so my name is Lauren, or LP, uh, and I'm the owner and co-founder of Focus on Health. So we're a platform, because I see there's a lot of new faces here, I just want to explain what it is we do on a day-to-day. -day. We're a platform that advocates for the health and wellness of the food and beverage industry. And uh, it has been an amazing year. Uh, we've gotten to work with so many amazing brands uh, and um, other individuals such as Jane that are just making health and wellness a very approachable thing. So really excited to have you all here today. Um, why not start this segment with a cocktail, right? Uh, so Jane's going to talk to us a little bit about what the concept is, but to set the mood and, you know, quite frankly, to, to really just do what we do, which is make drinks, um, I thought it'd be really cool to make an airmail and to talk a little bit about the history of it. So as you all saw, I'm using Rome JM. Uh, and Kiawa is actually going to discuss the product because she's probably the most knowledgeable person in the room about the product. <laughs> um, but I guess the best way to explain it is uh, to simply state the airmail cocktail when described is a uh, French 75 variation. Uh, today, I'm actually gonna do a little bit of a twist. I know that um, I we sent out that recipe ahead of time. So anybody who's making the drink along, feel free to follow me and I will reference back to that original cocktail, but I wanted to you know, put a little twist on it. So um, I like coconut water like no other. So I love putting a little bit of it in my glasses that I'm going to make highballs in and putting it in my freezer. 
This really helps for two different reasons. It adds dilution, it makes my drink cold. And then I guess there's a third reason, it's delicious. It slowly seeps into my drink. And with rum JM, that's like the perfect combination of flavor. So traditionally, the airmail is made with your base spirit, uh, base spirit, honey syrup, lime juice, and then sparkling wine. Today, I'm going to make it with our rum, some lime juice. I'm just gonna use simple syrup. I say just, but that coconut water will really add um, really lovely complexity. Uh, and I'm gonna top it off with uh, club soda, cause why not? So I know you can't really see my setup here, probably don't really wanna see it. So I'll just be sure to hold up my ingredients, but always gonna start with my least expensive ingredient. Reason for that, honestly, is because we're human, we make mistakes, but we don't wanna have to get rid of the good stuff, which is the rum JM. So we always put it in last, right? All right, so I, Firmly believe that fresh is best. Um, if you don't have whole fruit in your home, Whole Foods is a really great place to go and buy fresh squeezed juice. They usually have lime aid or lemonade, depending on where you are. And quite frankly, often um, those things end up getting tossed because they have a very short shelf life. So feel free to jump in. I'm going to pause for a second. I apologize. There's somebody asking about um, closed caption option. So it is enabled. What you'll have to do on your side is just uh, actually turn it on. Uh, so there, if you're on your phone, it says enable live transcripts. You can press that and then choose the language that you'd like it to be in. Okay. If you still have problems, please let us know. I see your messages. So just continue to message us. I want to make sure that you can access this. Um, I think there's somebody helping them with that. All right. So uh, I lost my train of thought and I apologize. Um, yeah, fresh juice is the best. Lean into the, you know, the local shops that you have. Whole Foods is a great resource. When I'm feeling, um, you know, like I, I, I have um, the ability to, uh, to, to, to go to my Whole Foods store to, uh, and I have the time because COVID is obviously a real weird world. Um, I'll just go buy limeade or lemonade to put in my drink. Um, okay, so I'm gonna squeeze that directly into my jigger here and I'm going to put a half ounce. Uh, traditionally, you do see the proportions that I'm using actually doubled. Um, there is a reason why I'm doing this. I'm gonna be using ice um, that is long and rectangular. There's a little less dilution in here. So um, I don't necessarily need it to be as concentrated. All right, next, I have my Demerara syrup here. So I do two parts sugar in the raw, one part uh, water. Uh, a rich simple is my best friend. Um, I don't really use anything else in my drinks. If I'm being completely honest, that's with lemonade, that's with anything. Uh, it just makes for a more delicious uh, drink in my opinion. I'm gonna pour that right into my tin and then taking my rum jam, I'm gonna add an ounce. I'm putting that right right on top there. So if you have honey syrup at home, um, I think a richer style is probably the way to go. Again, it's preference at that point, um, but you can do two to one or one to one is traditionally what we see. Um, I'm gonna add my ice to my tin. If you don't have a shaker tin, mason jar with lid is probably your best friend. Um, I'm just give that a nice shake. So when we're taking two things, adding dilution, making sure a drink is cold because nobody wants a warm drink unless it's supposed to be warm. I'm doing a short shake here again because I don't have as much um, liquid in my glass as I would if it was doubled again right want to be intentional about our approach of making this drink so I'm going to take my glass that has ice in it already I'm going to pour my drink into my glass and then I'm going to top it off with my ice so I know that some of you are making, or I, I assume some of you are making this, maybe not. But if you're making this later on, um, you're going to add your ice on top, and then you're going to add your soda water. Only thing you want to make sure you're doing is mixing all those lovely flavors together so that your first sip isn't just soda. Okay. So my garnish today, not traditional. I wouldn't typically garnish with a lime uh, peel. But I actually really love the oils of a lime. Um, so I peel it and make it all fancy. And then I place it on top of my drink like that. 
Voila. <laughs> Yay, that looks so yummy. Certainly something to oh toast so to. Good. So delicious. Um, delicious. The best. And if you all have questions about the product, we have an expert here. So you should definitely ask. Yeah, I'm Kiwa, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. I'm so excited uh, for this. I made my cocktail in advance because um, I just couldn't wait and I was really excited. Um, <laughs> and also just, I'm really excited to start getting writing. Um, I find writing to be very therapeutic and I refound it again during the pandemic. So this is all very awesome to me. Um, but yeah, as Lauren said, I represent Rum JM and a bunch of other spirits brands in the United States. Uh, I run marketing for uh, the umbrella company for Rum JM called Spiribomb. Um, so, you know, Rum JM is a AOC Martinique rum agricole. Um, it is from Makuba, which is a tiny little village in the north, in the jungle of the uh, northmost part of Martinique at the base of an active volcano. So it's pretty much like magic. We actually play the Jurassic theme song whenever, or the Jurassic Park theme song whenever we take people to the distillery. So it's, it's a lot of magic. It's, uh, it's, you know, really like terroir driven and mineral heavy because of that volcano and the soil there and the water that we use for the rum. So, um, you know, sugar cane juice, as opposed to molasses, that is the uh, way rum agricole is made. Um, and yeah, it is a, a, just a, a gem in the jungles of Martinique and one of, we're in the process of uh, getting a certification to prove that it's the most sustainable rum distillery in the world. We're working with a sustainability consultant. So um, we just, we really take, you know, every step of uh, sustainability like to heart and, you know, we mechanically harvest so that we're being ethically sustainable um you know instead of that laborious task of hand harvesting sugarcane and that enables us to be so efficient with um our our harvesting so we're able to actually like get the sugarcane from growing in the field to crushing and fermenting within an hour which nobody else can really claim to do and that is really important because sugarcane is like a really volatile product um like once you cut the sugar cane immediately, it starts like fermenting and the uh, bacteria starts changing the chemical properties, you know, which might invite some unfavorable flavors. Kind of like if you bite into an apple, it starts oxidizing immediately. The same thing happens with sugar cane. So you want to get it crushed and fermented and distilled or fermented as soon as possible. So you can start that process. And we're really, um, you know, that's why one of the reasons it is so like fruity and flavorful and beautiful and um, yeah, if you ever have any questions for me about rum agricole or rum in general, you can find me uh, on the uh, on the internets on the Instagram at rum r h u m muffin rum muffin. So <laughs> hit me up on there, or you know, reach out to Lauren, and I'm sure she'll be sure to send uh, my info your way. That's awesome. I love that rum muffin. I'll be following you soon. So I think with like a great cocktail in hand, like you certainly would have the appetite, you know, the goal in journaling, especially in creative journaling is to allow yourself to get to the paper or the blank page without a objective of being good, without the objective of being to resolve anything and without really the need to um, over extend yourself in anything other than allowing what is inside the, you know, your left brain, the, the, the space that is seldom tapped into. We want to travel over to the left brain. And then we also want to ignite the parasympathetic nervous system. So I'm sure you've heard this before, but like our bodies are made up in two pieces. We know that if a bear is chasing us, we need to, you know, fight or flight that part of our body is always on. So like, thank you, mother nature, who, whatever you believe in, but God or however, we were designed so that we were not putting ourselves in harm's way. It's how we recognize heat. It's how we, you know, know to get out of a shower when we've been in it too long or, you know, our fingers wrinkle. The problem is, or not the problem, but the way we we're also designed is that rest and digest, the part of the body that naturally subdues you, slows you down, reduces anxiety, the parasympathetic nervous system doesn't automatically go on. You have to encourage it. You have to trigger it. So um, deep breathing, sl deep sleep, uh, overeating, right? Things that can help like force the body to digest, which then 
forces the body to rest, right? We've all been to Thanksgiving dinner and we know what that feels like, right? You eat like a, you know, you eat a lot and then you're napping. So one of the issues that we have with being so digital these days and not analog is that we're constantly overstimulating the sympathetic nervous system that's telling us to be in fight or flight all the time. So I'm a big fan of just getting analog so that if you, you know, you don't have a lot of time putting yourself first, having a wellness practice is not something that necessarily comes easy to you. This should be fun, playful, and easy. So we're going to get right into it. We're going to do three writing workshops or three writing exercises today. Each are only seven minutes. Um, I believe that it doesn't have to take a really long time to get to um, stimulating all the positives. And there's so many benefits of writing. So we're just going to get right into it. I thought I would um, read a little poem because it's one of my favorite toasts of all time. I drink champagne when I'm happy and when I'm sad. Sometimes I drink it when I'm alone or when I have company, I consider it obligatory. I trifle with it if I'm not hungry and I drink it when I am. Otherwise, I never touch it unless I'm thirsty. And so Lily Bollinger, uh, as we all know from the House of Bollinger, or Bollinger um, this was her famous quote and a really significant toast. And that's what we're here to play with today is the art of the toast. So I want you to grab a pen and something to write on. It doesn't matter. It can be your kid's homework. It can be a, a nice journal like mine or anything, maybe the work you're working on today. I'm going to set the clock for seven minutes. And what I'd like you to write about today is it's a sort of a free write. If there's no real constraints on it, I'd like you to just simply recall the last toast you gave. When was the last time you sat around a table or in front of a group of people and gave a toast? And in addition to what was your toast, I don't necessarily need you to remember what you said, but I want you to remember who was there, see how well you can describe it. What was the mood or the emotion after your toast? Did you bring the crowd to tears? Was everybody laughing? Did you start a fight? You know, what, what happened when you gave that toast? So I'd like you to see if you can go back to the last time you really experienced a joyful moment and gave a toast and then just write about it. And we'll catch you on the other side. I'm going to turn on a little music as well. Um, so hopefully that'll let you just experience the, the writing. So when you're ready, start writing. The clock has been set and the timer's going. And I'll see you in just a few minutes. And again, if anybody didn't quite catch that, the idea is to just recall the last time you gave a toast. Not exactly what it was, but who was there? What was the event? What inspired you to write that toast or give that toast? Who was in the room? Can you remember? Maybe it was for your grandparents' 75th wedding anniversary. So just have some fun with it. And... We'll see you on the other side. Jane, someone had a question. Yes. They asked, what if they've never given a toast? Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. So if you've never given a toast, use your imagination. Stand up, you know, what would be the magical toast that you would want to give today? Pick, pick any event, any sporting event, personal memory, and anything you'd like to celebrate. So make, make one up and have a blast as to you know, discerning why you pick that thing. But I just simply want you to get pen to paper so that you're getting in the rhythm of moving a non-digital tool. I want you to get into the rhythm of feeling the pen hit the paper, your pencil hit the paper, your crayon, whatever that is. And then what's gonna start to naturally happen to your body is your heart rate's gonna slow down, your breath is gonna calibrate and your brain's gonna start to allow itself to be less focused on the outcome and more focused on the creativity. And when that happens, we're really stimulating uh, the part of our body that helps us cope, the part of our body that helps us chill out, the part of our body that helps us, you know, get a handle on it. So we just want to stimulate that place in our body naturally so that we know how to reach for those tools when we really need them. So I'm going to turn some music on. Also, hopefully you like my music choice. If you don't like it, we'll 
not do it next time. And again, just keep moving the pencil or pen across the paper. And if you find yourself not certain about what to write next, just keep going. You can say like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Toast, 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 toast. Just keep the pencil moving. Okay, everybody, that was seven minutes. So put your pens down. Again, this is a, a workshop. So if you have the desire, I'd love for you to turn your cameras back on. Chat is also another 
a wonderful opportunity. Um, but I'd love to sort of hear first, you know, um, Rachel, if you don't mind, how did seven minutes feel? And I think you can unmute yourself. Just like, we're like, good God, make it end. Or we're, did it I would go say by like that? The first five minutes went by pretty fast. And then I kind of hit sort of like a, a speed bump or something and kind of ran out. And then the last two minutes was kind of like struggling to, to keep finding things to write. I think I just started writing joy at the end. Hey, if you're going <laughs> to pick something to focus on, that's a wonderful thing physically, since again, like pen and paper, we don't use it very often. How did it just feel to use a pen for a lengthy period of time or pencil yeah, or crayon? Soreness in my wrist, for sure. I bet. I bet. So it's really nice, again, as I mentioned, there there's so many deliberate um, benefits of writing. Um, you know, certainly one of the great benefits. And again, as we're all, you know, we're all working in a field in which we engage other people. And what's really nice about writing, especially on like, like when you're doing creative writing, it allows you to start to really think about how to construct that fun, playful place into words and thoughts so that you're articulating more clearly. So the more you write, the better you'll be able to communicate your thoughts more clearly. Um, and certainly the more you write, you're training the body to slow down and let all of the, you know, your heart rate starts to calibrate, your breath starts to slow down. Um, and it's really very beneficial. It's, you know, for those of you that are not capable of meditating, this is a great way to sort of have some moving meditation. Um, Kiwa, what was your toast? Do you mind me asking? Um, it was really lackluster. Um, I actually went out to eat in Los Angeles outdoors for the first time since the pandemic started last week um, with five friends, four friends for our friend's 40th birthday. And we all got COVID tests before and it was outside. It was very safe, um, but it was, it, I had a lot of anxiety because I haven't really socialized in so long in, in real life. Um, so there was a lot of like anxiety attached to it, but also a lot of relief that like, I still know how to talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> My, like, I don't have complete social atrophy as much as I thought that I would. So it was like kind of a, a, a roller coaster of emotions that I remembered. And it was so recent that, that it was like pretty fresh in my mind. That's so nice. And are you a journaler naturally? Do you like putting pen to paper traditionally? Um, I used to do the morning pages like 20 years ago, like, uh, and write a lot then. And then I took like a 20 year break. And then uh, this year I, I started going back to school during the pandemic. So I've been doing like English and literature and I have a lot of writing assignments. So I've refound, re, you know, claimed my like writing, my love for writing recently. So that's fantastic. That's so good. Lauren, what was your toast? Yeah, I'm just gonna read it. Um, it's a lot. So uh, I found myself, uh, let's see. It's been a while for as much as I've missed you. I feel that you've never actually been too far away. I toast and celebrate more often than I ever have before. Appreciating moments of celebration, victories, the fight for our lives and even death. When I look back and reflect on my last official toast or even a moment where I had to think about it, I found peace with where I found myself. It was in this exact room, so the last time we did, you know, uh, a writing workshop, that I realized that I came to the realization of the importance of being proud and grateful of even the smallest moments, or at least those moments that appear to be small. Let's consider for a moment how small things result in big change. We see this with time as we almost approach a year of COVID, and then you cut the time and I, I thought I was writing way more and then I looked at my paper and I was like, I just got started. <laughs> That's so nice. And again, I, you know, there's no real super magic in seven minutes, to be honest with you. I write for seven minutes because it's not five and it's not 10. I feel like five is a number that I could give up on and it's only five minutes and I'm not really going to do it. 10 feels like, well, I'm, you know, I'm a busy human being. I don't have a lot of time to focus or articulate or take my brain off. But again, if you can use journaling, creative journaling, bullet journaling, morning pages, 
in a more habitual way, it just absolutely helps you start to hone tools in a quick manner of time that can really be um, artfully beneficial as well as physically beneficial. So the next exercise, um, it's gonna get a little deeper, maybe like a tiny bit harder. And I want you to give some thought to it before you like jump right at the piece of paper. But I'd like for you to write now. So again, if you've never given a toast, now I'm giving you one to toast to. I would like for you to write as if you were raising a glass to the pandemic. So we're gonna toast COVID the year 2020 or the first few months of 2021 as if it were a person. So this is a wedding, this is a business meeting, a 40th birthday, whatever, but the pandemic is a human being. So I'd like you to you know, explore, would you be gentle and kind? Are you gonna maybe be angry and bitter? You know, Are you gonna be that mad ex-boyfriend at someone's wedding that gives like the crappy toast? You know, what, what is it going to be? So I'd like you to really think about that. And can we maybe see the bright side and what is cheer worthy of this last calendar year or the first few months of 2021 and, you know, see how that would come to life. So again, it can be really sloppy, super angry, nice and tight, light and fluffy, but let's see where we can toast to our last year into the pandemic. So I'm gonna start the clock again, um, put some music back on, have some fun with it. If yours is full of expletives, I support that. If it is full of kindness and generosity and lessons learned, even better. So again, write it as if COVID were a person or the pandemic were a person and what you would raise a glass to in the last year. Alrighty, setting the clock. Away you go. And again, the only rule is there sort of are no rules. If you don't like this prompt, color. If you don't like this prompt and want to write something else, write something else. Just don't stop for the whole seven minutes. And I'll go back to a little bit of music.
All right, pens down on that sad song. Okay, so I'm curious how you guys did with your toast to what is some of the worst times that maybe we've experienced or perhaps in light of what we experience, what we now see is some really beautiful times. So Danny, because I know you, I'm gonna ask what you, um, what you came up with and what came out onto your paper. Oh man, okay, well, um, all right, I'm just gonna dive into it. Um, yeah. well, let me mute this, I just realized my TV is on. Um, it says, as much as I would like to give you all the credit of being the worst year, I will not. Instead, you taught me to slow down. <clears throat> For a long time, I was running on empty. I just told myself I couldn't slow down or I would drop all of the balls I was juggling. You gave me the gift of time and patience. You gave me time to grieve, to love, to see my worth, and that life still goes on. What does that say? <laughs> I'm reading it. You reminded me that even on, on the days I don't feel beautiful, I am. You reminded me even when I feel alone, I am not. 2019 took everything out of me and you reminded me even when I feel lost and tired and like I can't do it anymore to keep moving forward because I am bigger than what is done to me. I will never want to repeat this chapter, but I will never wish to do it, do it over differently. You reminded me my value goes beyond what I can do for others and putting myself first is not going to kill anyone. Instead, it will remove the ones that are not meant for me. <clears throat> Wow. That was just so nice to like <laughs> unpack that and put all that down. You know, again, I keep talking about the physical benefits of writing, but one of the most immediate mental is just the ability to put whatever is frustrating you or painting you or sort of annoying you. Like we get to just put it down. You know, if anybody has been experiencing lack of sleep or restless nights of sleep, journal for seven minutes before you go to bed. Find one thing that it doesn't necessarily have to be a joyful thing. Just 
find one thing to sort of data dump and get it out of you. So Danny, I hope that you feel lighter because I do just from hearing that. Like, thank you so much for sharing. Um, Melanie, I know you have your camera off, but would you like to share with us what your toast was? Melanie Hartman? Okay, that's okay. No worries. Is there anybody else with their camera off that might wish to share? Becky, I know you mentioned that you hadn't given a toast before. So what what did you feel about this exercise? Uh, well, mine just turned into a rant. Oh, good. Get it out. Do you want to share? I just, I just started ranting about it and um, I couldn't, I, I'm tired of people telling me to look for the good in things. I'm just sick of it enough. I, you know what, again, sometimes the, excuse my language, the bullshit that we tell ourselves, we start to believe. And I think that it probably also felt really great to just rant because now you can put it down on a piece of paper. You know, I'm not someone that, um, again, I don't believe in it one way or the other. I don't keep my journals. As a matter of fact, most often I write, pull it out and rip it out because whatever I was putting out into the universe, whether it was beautiful or negative, like it just served that moment in time. So I'm really glad that you were open and honest about just needing it to get out and get it off your chest. And it's okay to be mad. Last year was not awesome. The first few months of this year have been a little um, rocky. So I'm really glad that you shared that. And I hope it felt really good to get it off your chest. Yeah, it did. That's awesome. Are you and a I'm journaler? Looking to, I'm looking forward to shredding this piece of paper after this too. That's, <laughs> I would suggest, as long as you don't live anywhere flammable, set it on fire. And if you're in Texas and you need a little bit of heat, this could serve your purpose. So um, fine, not well done joke, but I think that, you know, again, letting, letting things go and how you like fully exercise and um, express them is fantastic. So I'm proud of you for doing that. Um, Keegan, do you want to share? I know you've got your camera off, but I just figured I might ask since you're out there. Hello, everybody. I am, Hi. Uh, I am participating in the background. Um, I'm doing gro grocery shopping right now, but I am That's an awesome. avid writer and I'm really loving the vibe right now. Uh, but I don't have nothing to contribute because I'm like running around, but I'm looking forward to the next one. No worries. I, <laughs> dude, I, can you grab me uh, some rum? Uh, oh, yes. I'm actually, <laughs> yes, I'm drinking some really good rum right now, too. So fantastic. I am enjoying the conversation. <laughs> That's wonderful. So I'm going to leave us with one last prompt. And again, just in essence of, of time, um, I'll let you take it with you so you can sort of go, go on to your grocery shopping or into your evening or whatever you need to accomplish tonight. But the last one is a letter. And so if you're using a journal, like definitely rip these pages out when you're done. If you have some free paper, pull it out. Because I want you to write a letter to yourself. I want you to date it. Today's February 18th. So March 18th. So Open me March 18th to go on the top of your envelope or your piece of paper or fold it in half and stick it on your fridge. But what I'd like you to do is I want you to write a letter to yourself in which you'll toast yourself at the end of this pandemic. And again, we are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. We believe that there is, you know, a way for us to get back to uh, maybe not normal. I don't think there was ever a normal, but I want you to think about what you want to see for yourself. And it's up to you. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. I just want you to read it to yourself 30 days from now. It is a means to sort of keep you going uh, and be excited. You know, so uh, Becky, you're real pissed and you needed to let some stuff go. That's fantastic. But you'll probably find a path to joy. Danny talked about how proud of herself that she was for sort of taking some of the bad and turning it into optimism. So I just want you to leave here tonight, hopefully with your cocktail at hand, with the idea that you'll write yourself a letter to what you're most proud of, what you have learned about yourself, about your family, about the community around you, um, about your ability to thrive. You know, I will say this, 
I'm very much like Becky. I'm like, please stop telling me to be so, you know, happy about it. I'm just grateful I survived. I was so happy to turn the clock to 2021 because I just felt grateful to survive. What I'm working on now is how to put it down, like how to put that anxiety, the fear, you know, dismantled all of our industry. And so I'm just working now. So my short and medium and long-term goals are how do I put it down so that I can move forward more effectively instead of picking up anything new. So write yourself a letter, put it on your fridge, revisit it in 30 days. And if you are so inspired, please visit um, pen to paper project.com or follow us on Instagram. Um, about four days a week, I post prompts like this so you can keep motivating yourself to the blank page. Um, but we'd love to have you follow us. We also sell journals with prompts um, in them. So you have you know your writing pad and some prompts with you so you don't have to really think about it. Um, but please sit down, turn your own clock on, write yourself a letter, give yourself some props for getting through a long time of, of challenges and honor what is next for you. Um, I will leave that there and let Lauren wrap it up and you out, you know, close it out. But you guys will take the last exercise uh, into your evening on your own. Excellent. And speaking of journals, uh, five of you lucky beings will receive one. Uh, we're going to do a drawing after the class. So we will email you to follow up with your mailing address. Um, compliments of pen to paper. So we're really excited about that. Uh, but no, I just want to say thank you for all of you taking time out of your evenings to be here with us. Um, we definitely are trying our best to do this more often. And luckily we have another workshop with Rum JM coming next month. Uh, so the information for that is on our website. So feel free to check it out, uh, fohealth.org or our Instagram at fohealth. We try to make that real easy. It's just fohealth across the board. Um, but yeah, if you have questions, uh, feel free to reach out. We can connect you with Jane. We can connect you with, um, to, uh, to uh, uh, Jane as a resource, uh, essentially is what I was attempting to say. Um, and yeah, I think uh, anyone who wants to share their pieces from this evening, feel free to email me. We're happy to post that to the website. We have a couple of pieces from the past that we've placed up there. And additionally, any prompts um, or sessions we've done with Jane, the prompts are up on our website as well. If you feel so inclined to uh, continue to write. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everybody. Happy yeah. drinking, you. happy toasting, Thank and hopefully so we'll much. see you all next month. Cheers, you all. Bye, Thank cheers. You. Thank come you. Back Thank next you. Month. Please come back next month. We'll be doing this again. I will be here. <laughs>